of the Trash Talk Business Podcast, your weekly rendition of all things business, sometimes trash. And with the upsetting loss of the Dallas Cowboys, you know, we're going to be talking football at some time today. As always, I'm Andy Wines. He's Casey Bubba Lawrence. And today we have a guest. Casey, what are we going to talk about today? Uh, not the Cowboys. We're going to talk, <laughs> we're talking about junk. That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, we right now, we're talking about junk. The Cow- Derek. Cow- Hold on, Cowboys, <laughs> Cowboys Cardinals. That was junk. That was that was oh, trash. Yeah. The <laughs> You're right. That was <laughs> trash. Oh man! No, we have a guest, man. His name is Derek Johnson. So I'm actually looking forward to hearing more about him. I have no idea what he does or who he is. Um, and that's None. the one thing I like about this is we want to bring you on. Sometimes we don't have any prep at all, which is fine because it makes it I think, good. more raw. So, Derek, thanks for being uh, being with us. What you got? I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So I'm a, I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I was in for oh. 10 years. I uh, grew up as an Army brat. Father was 25 plus. Uh, mother was a kindergarten teacher for 40 plus years. And nowadays I'm a trainer and life coach. So essentially mm-hmm. I help business owners identify areas that they're struggling. So they stop pushing it in the closet or under the rug. So an example could be the CEO making a couple mil, but he's drinking too much or has anger issues or the person that has hit the ceiling in their career because of lack of public speaking, whatever the case may be, mm. we make sure to tackle those things so they can thrive in more than just one area. So that way holiday season doesn't come around and they're like, yeah, I should have worked on this in business or personally. So we basically break old patterns so they can thrive mm. and not just feel like they're just surviving. I like it. So I, I, uh, I so- do a thing called, uh, Experience Andy Wines Live. That's the, the live show I do right before this every Monday at 1 okay. p.m. Central. Shout out me. Um, I'll, I'll take a plug. <laughs> and and on that, I talked about today, I talked about the hustle, struggle, grind. And talking about when you, right, you, you reach that point of struggle is right before you get what you're, you're going for. And sometimes you get to that point of struggle, you get what you wanted, and it's not what you wanted at all. Right? So oh, you, yeah. you start like kind of grinding out life. And it's like, no, now you got to now you got to take on something else. Right? You got to hustle. Mm-hmm. Right? So I, I talk about embracing the struggle, as we know in the U.S. Army, embrace the suck. Um, oh, yeah. What? So let's talk about that. Well, so what, oh, real ahead, quick on, on that, Andy. Yeah, please. Um, this, the, here's the perfect, the perfect thing I've heard a lot of, right? And especially for newer entrepreneurs, they get into the mantra of their mindset is so used to the 9 to 5 or the mm-hmm. 8 to 5 schedule that they will say, hey, you know what? After five o'clock, man, I'm done. I'm not talking to anyone. I'm blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, they are complaining. Man, I don't have any jobs lined up this month. I don't have anything. You know, all these phone calls I'm getting, they're just bullshit. It's like, well, here's the deal. In the beginning, right, you're going to be working more than ever. You're going to be working harder than ever. And you're going to have to give it your all. Is it worth it? 100% in my mind. Is it worth it to you? That's for you to figure out. Um, you can always go back and work for someone else and mm-hmm. keep that nine to five schedule. If you want that comfortability of, Hey, at five o'clock, I'm off. I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to worry about anything. That's fine. You want to call that a boundary. We can do that. Yep. But in the world of entrepreneurship, you have to earn that kind of comfortability. You have to relearn how to do it, but you have to earn that boundary and you can call it a boundary, but it's actually an obstacle you're creating for yourself in the beginning. Because you're thinking how you used to work. You're not saying, oh, I'm an entrepreneur now. No, you're saying, oh, I'm an entrepreneur, but I don't want the hard stuff. I just want the cool things about being an entrepreneur. And so, I see a so, lot of people struggle with that, and it starts yeah. up here. So, so the, the key oh, yeah. there is establish boundaries and communicate those boundaries with the people that are most important. So I know for me, my mm-hmm. first year, all I did was eat, sleep, and breathe the franchise brand we were part of. And and that wasn't healthy because we would be talking about it at family dinner. We would be talking about my girlfriend and I, all I would talk about was work and how to be better. And I was obsessed. And, and so I went with that. And so I went hard. Um, the, the adage I give people is, you know, go hard for six months, right? Cause a boundary can also say time. Like, Hey, first six months, mm-hmm. leave me alone. I am, this is it. I'm going after it, right? Go hard for six months to set yourself up for success the next five years. And once you've put enough fat and meat on the bone, then and only then can you start trimming the fat because mm-hmm. the, the, to your point i've seen people they're like hey 
I'm an, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to work less and make more now. And it's like, no, 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 you got your, that, that's bad math. That math <laughs> don't work. Surprise. And then I met, here's this other thing. Doesn't I met this math. cat. I met this cat. I can't recall his name. Uh, he lives in Florida. Nice guy. Uh, I met him uh, in episode when I, we, were, we were recording episode one of the Masters of Home Service podcast, which announcement, I don't know if I, did I put this out yet? I, they signed me up for episode or season two. So season two, Masters of Home Service podcast by Jobber. I'll be in Vegas next week recording. I might I might catch up with Las Vegas Lenny, one of our listeners here on the podcast. Um, uh, brain, brain, brain. Anyways, okay, so his, this is his rule. He says he gets home every day at 5 p.m. He leaves his work phone in his truck in the center council because he told his wife and kids, mm-hmm. when I get home at 5, I'm done working. It took him four mm-hmm. years to get there. And his other solution is he gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Right. So mm-hmm. he puts there the work in. So he found right boundary wise, he figured out, oh, shit, I can't work till nine o'clock every night. It took him like four years to figure that out. So then he established boundaries and he had to hire the right personnel and he had to write the, the SOPs, which we talked about. And he had to uphold the standards and he had to have a scorecard to make sure that the SOPs would be right. He did all these things to get this. Oh, I'm home by five. And he also said, hey, I can get up at four o'clock in the morning every day. Because he's like, I get all my emails and stuff done between like four and six. He spends like six to seven with his kids. And then he goes into work. So he found it because he did it for a long time. The challenge is when people, like you said, Casey, boundaries also can be restrictions. If you say from day one, I'm only working from this time to this time, you're leaving so much opportunity. For me, I go hard in the paint three days a week. That's what I call it. Mondays is when I do content. I work on myself. Mondays, I, I take a lot of meetings. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I go hard. I go hard in the paint. The only thing that gets me to leave on Tuesday and Wednesday from work is volleyball. That's what I decide. So I, this this Wednesday or this Tuesday, tomorrow, I have a 9.30 volleyball game, which means I will work until 9 p.m. And I'm going to get a lot of stuff done. And then I know I have to leave work. And on Fridays, I don't go into work if I don't have to. I work from home. I can be done by noon. So I'd rather go harder for a shorter amount of time. And on the weekends, I rarely open my, my laptop on the weekend. And this is, I used to work seven days a week. 12 hour minimums, no questions asked. So th- this is, this is, this, I, I, I'm a big fan. Seven, eight episodes. This is, you're our first coach um, that we've ever had on. And also put in awesome. perspective, we know nothing about you. So mm-hmm. we always talk about on this, on, on this uh, podcast, this podcast started because Casey and I would sit and bullshit for an hour every week. And we would sometimes come up with <laughs> resolutions to life and sometimes just talk in circles. And we're like, cool. Let's plus record, and maybe others want to listen to what we're talking about, and maybe others oh, want yeah. to join the conversation. So, this is a prime example that we are doing something outside of our norm. This is not junk and move. Doing podcasting is different, and we're willing. We're saying, "Hey, we'll put ninety minutes aside once a week and figure out what happens." And our rule is simple: we let everybody on that that we we haven't right. We don't want thirty seven marketing companies in a row, right? We want people on that are interesting. And then we want to learn from them with no parameters. Because I've been on podcasts before. Where people are like, don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. Like yeah. our show prep, Derek, you were there, right? You can tell the listeners if they ask, was like, cool, Derek Johnson. That's how we say your name. Good. Press the button. And here we are. So let's talk about it. Why? I want to start here. Why do you do what you do? Great question. So a big reason why I do what I do is I grew up with both parents being hyper successful in their fields. Dad was military along with a real estate agent and Mm -hmm. mother has been a kindergarten teacher 40 plus years. So I grew up seeing the structure parents up at four and five working out on the flip side, outside of the discipline, the structure and all that. The phrase I love you was not said in our home growing up. So both parents Mm -hmm. had their own traumas growing up. They were both the oldest of multiple siblings. So they had to grow up and mature really fast. So because of that, they started their careers early. And I guess they did not get the help and the resources that they needed as kids. So they grew up poor, then became hyper successful. And they basically became alcoholics, but functioning only at night, as in Mm -hmm. it was only released at night. And I essentially became the physical, verbal, emotional punching bag. But I always saw that in a competitive standpoint, like I was an athlete and I was like, all right, they're prepping me for drill sergeants. They're prepping me for this. So I didn't necessarily how have and hold that much anger towards them, I would always see that this is going to teach me and make me. So mm-hmm. I believe anybody that's been through a level of trauma, whatever level they want to say they went through or endured, everybody has a gift. And I feel like my gift as a child and teen at that time period was discernment, being able to read people in a room where I was just like calm during the storm. 
Like I didn't want to mm-hmm. bash my parents' reputation. They were well-known and all that. But I said, what can I do here? Between the hours of 9 p.m. to 1 a.m., all shit would go loose and stuff would be broken and all that. And then very next morning, hey, where do you want to have breakfast at? Where do you want to go this weekend? I'm like, did you miss what happened for three hours last night? But that started happening at the age of 11. Around the age of 12, I said, I have to shift this. So I use fitness as my outlet. And I basically put my foot down to myself. I was a skinny kid. I was like, I'm getting bullied at home. I'm getting bullied in school. I need to stand up. So I changed my body. And within a year, my teachers, my classmates and all that were like, dude, how'd you do this? And then at 15, I started getting into personal training. But in my experience in school and college, I realized that some clients months or years after we worked together, they started to go backwards. And I felt on a personal level, I let him and her down. So that's what inspired me to get into life coaching was learning about the mind so I could help more civilians. I could help my soldiers on a deeper level. And from there, I knew that I could get those limiting beliefs, the traumas, and all those things that are really holding people back that they carry from person to person, relationship to relationship. We would get rid of those things so they could thrive. So essentially healing that inner child to then helping heal other people, but give them the power that's already in them where they can peel off the layers of the BS or whatever somebody else placed onto them to help them that way. So definitely the Mm -hmm. upbringing, seeing that and being able to see, hey, this is a gift. I need to use this. I I love what you're saying. So when I talk about, I talk about this in my book, right? I love the fact that you you touched on wounded inner child. We all have a wounded inner child within us. Uh, It's deep and and, and, um, it ends up, right? It's an iceberg. It's the shit below the surface. It's all in your subconscious. And it drives your values and beliefs, and those beliefs can be absolutely self-limiting. And often when your um, ego is under attack, that's when they come after you. So I talk about that. I talk about my the last chapter of my book, I talk about my wounded inner child is this feeling that I'm not good enough. And perpetuated by like the song, uh, uh, Green Day's song, Nice Guys Finish Last. I I always thought that I had to be hard. And one of the reasons I joined the Army was, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get hard. I'm going to go overseas. I'm going to kill somebody. And then and then I'm a man, right? Check the box. That's what. Yeah. Right, growing up. Hula, right, hula shit. Right, growing up watching American <laughs> Gladiators and WWF superstars on a Sunday morning. You see the BL You Can Be commercials, right? And you watch mm-hmm. movies uh, like oh, yeah. Platoon and, and uh, well, Braveheart. I mean, everything. It doesn't even have to be American. But it's like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to war. I'm going to kill people. And then, and then I'm a man because I was a scrawny kid, yeah. short scrawny kid growing up. And I was like, all right, like that hey, does the thing. Scrawny. <laughs> now I'm telling Scotty. Some may say good looking, <laughs> subjective. Um, and, 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 and so I love the fact you're talking about uh, the wounded inner child work and also about you know, what I find interesting is when you tell people you go to the gym, if I say I go to the gym three days a week, they'll be like, oh, that's awesome. Like, good on you. But I'm like, hey, I see a counselor once every other week. They're like, oh, what's wrong with you? And it's like, well, hold yep. on. Why is yep. it? Why <laughs> yep. is it when I work on my mental health? It's like, ooh, right? And I, hell, I had my counseling this morning, 11 a.m. Like, I, I was. I was 15 minutes late to a networking event. To networking lunch, I came in, I sat down, and I said, hey, I'm always going to be 15 minutes late for this because I have a, a standing appointment every other Monday. They're like, oh, what kind of appointment? I go, with my I'm with my, my counselor. And the other girl goes, mm-hmm. I've been looking for a good counselor. Do you, could you have a recommendation? Right? And it's like, now listen, she's yeah. like, yeah, I'm a little fucked up. Right? And she does she does uh, uh, boxing. That's her thing. Her, her Boxing's her physical release. And she also needs a mental release. So I love that mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're drawing the physical. Right? You will suck. Physically, right? It's a it, there's a limitation. Mental, right? right you have to right, you have physical. To, yeah, actually, Casey, oh, yeah. If, Casey, if you want to talk about it? So Casey actually turned me on a little bit. We talked about this last episode or two episodes about F three. You on a lot, Andy. I don't know what you're talking I, about. I, I tur- you turned me on to a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> still, still a huge Give him flowers. Give him flowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm still a huge <laughs> fan of the 13 time world champion green bay football packers with their third consecutive hall of fame quarterback at the helm how about you give up to my boy jordan love on his 18 point fourth quarter comeback because he looked like dog shit dog shit before yeah, that well, didn't help that the other team <laughs> lost their quarterback right <laughs> and also the two pass interference calls that were the two biggest plays in the game no big deal no big oh, deal man. a w at the end of the season w's are w's there you go yeah but anyways no but f3 is that your is that hold on is your mug f3, f3. oh my god there we go oh, yeah, unofficial man. sponsor that's what i'm saying unofficial nice. sponsor f3 casey talk about f3 because i know it's important to you and it falls right in line with derek maybe those guys will be like real sponsors someday pop man maybe not. Derek, you ever heard of f3 yeah. no i haven't 
Okay, so so it's pretty cool. I, I learned honestly because someone told me about it, and they were like, "Oh yeah, I'm thinking about joining just to see what it's all about." But here's the thing: it it's not attractive at first at all. It's it starts at five thirty in the morning, out outdoors, no matter what the weather's like, unless it's lightning. Um, so immediately I was just like, "Yeah, fuck that." But <laughs> I started to really look at what I was missing, and I didn't like working out physically. I didn't like working out on the uh, the later part of the day because that's when I'm with my family, man. That's when I'm with the boys. Yeah. And it was always hard for me to get in the gym in the morning because I'm just not into it. And I get there and it's like, nah. And I see some muscle head. I'm just like, nah. I'm good. He's working out for the both of us. But <laughs> I saw work. that. Yeah, man. And so I saw how this was built and. It's real simple, man. It, it, it's for men only. And it's a group of guys that meet at 530 in the morning. And it's boot camp style workout. Every nice. single workout is led by a different person of the group. Right. Um, the, the three F's is, is fitness, fellowship and faith. Um, and they, they even tell you, like, hey, we don't need you to believe in a certain faith. We just want you to understand and believe that there is something greater than you. Right. Um, so the cool thing about it is I tried it out, right? I did it. I just said, let's go. Um, and man, it was an ass whooping. But after that, I, I wanted to keep it going. So I did it again. And then I did it again. And then, so this thing on my, there, that's a, it's 10, right? Yeah. That's for 10 consecutive um, meetups. And they also call it a six pack. If you get six in a row, all this other stuff. So I said, why not? I just did it, right? And on my 10th was also my sixth consecutive. So it was, it was really cool. And then I became not just addicted to it, but I, I became very interested in bettering myself through the group. Um, and it was because it wasn't a bunch of vets. As much as you would think it was, it was started by vets. But it really wasn't a bunch of vets. There was a couple that are vets. Most of them are just everyday guys. Um, most of them are, are, are dads. And the reason they're very strict on the timing, it's from 5.30 to 6.15 every morning. Or whenever they they meet, but they yeah. end at six fifteen because like, hey, look, we know after that you got shit to do, you got to drop the kids off, whatever. Um, so it's actually perfect. Now normally we hang out about fifteen twenty minutes afterwards, drink some coffee, someone brings Gatorade, something like that, and just bullshit, get to know each other. But what I found was it's more than just working out because the fact that a different person leads every time, you get exposure to different kinds of leadership. You also get exposure to being forced, not really forced because it is voluntary. You don't have to lead it, but you get pressure to get influenced into getting in front of a bunch of people you don't know and not just talking, but leading an actual workout for 45 minutes. Oh, yeah. And as you probably know, it's not very easy at first. You're kind of like, dude, jumping jacks, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you don't really know <laughs> what to do. Um, but the longer I did it, like now I'm at like, I think I've done like 27 or something, but. I've done three, I've led three workouts and each time I do it, I get better, not just physically, but I get better mentally. Afterwards, the guys will talk to me more about what's going on in their life. And then they encourage, of course, Hey, you know, we also meet for small groups. If you want to, you know, do, if you want to read the Bible or if you want to talk a little bit more, get in depth personally, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's not forced, but I noticed that it helps my morning, helps my day just boost. Right. I don't even need coffee until like 11, maybe sometimes around lunchtime because I'm already ready to go. I get home, I shower, get dressed, get, get my son up for school, take him to school after I'm, I'm back home before eight o'clock. And now I'm like, Hit, like I've already done so much. My oh, yeah. body is ready to roll. My mind is ready to roll. Like what's next on the list, right? So yeah, that's F3, man, in a nutshell. Yeah, I, lo I love that, man. And that mentality of that early rise and moving the body mm -hmm. first. So I feel like some people, they screw themselves doing too much for the mind in the morning. Like they'll mm -hmm. journal, they'll pray, they'll meditate, they visualize. All these things are effective and they work. But if they haven't released yet, they're going to feel annoyed doing that thing. Or they're like, this like isn't Andy working. Andy mentioned that last time, actually. Yeah, so I talked about and, and, and Andrew Huberman talks about the first 90 minutes of the day is um, wake up. Do something physically difficult. He says, oh, yeah. go for a walk. If a walk is physically difficult for you, do a walk. Right. But the whole thing is get yourself in motion. And he, he says anywhere between mm -hmm. 20 and 45 minutes of physical activity. And then, and then his thing is ice bath, where he said it's actually it started with the ice bath, then it's the physical activity. 
and then basically go your first 90 minutes without coffee because then you're you're, you're letting your body wake up normally and naturally. And even within oh, yeah. there, after the first hour, then you could take time for meditation. Uh, and and I got into fitness and my more my mental health journey through a CEO roundtable. Um, I realized I've been in the same CEO roundtable about three and a half years, and I realized everybody that I wanted to emulate worked out. I was the only one that was like, oh, I play, I play volleyball twice a week. And it's like, but volleyball isn't improving. Like my volleyball game is getting better. I'm, I'm right. I'm not, but it's more my craft, right? There's a difference between like, yeah. when I go to the gym, I'm not improving my craft. I'm improving my body. That's it. Now volleyball, I get better at volleyball, but it's like, well, if I have, you know, more endurance and more strength, then I can also be better at volleyball. Right. Like, exactly. and, then, and again, like I, I, I talked about this in, um, my, my experience in wines live. And again, I had no clue that you were anybody. I thought you were a marketing guy. I don't know. Um, Cause I didn't look at my calendar. I'm like, I don't know. Derek Johnson. Like it's a strong man. <laughs> like that could be a wrestler. I don't know. Um, also Derek is my alias uh, and spelled the way you spell it. Like D Rick. Uh, that's my, nice. that's my alias whenever I'm at work and I'm on the phones and I don't want them to know it's the owner on the phone. I'm like, yeah, that's Derek. Nice. Or if I said, I'll sign emails as Derek sometimes with people I know. Um, so if you ever get an email <laughs> from Derek for any of our customers, that's me. Um, so anyways, there's that. Uh, nice. <laughs> no, what I, what I was saying is when I, when I talked about life, the three, for me, the three major strands of life, right? And life is, a, right, I look at your life as a rope and over time it gets longer and right. There's going to be tension on where you, where you came from and where you're going. And it's going to flex But the, the three areas of life. I put it in three S's to keep it straight for me as yourself, your society and your, and your skill, right? It, it also can be the people or your craft, right? Versus society. And, um, and so when I talk about my craft, there's a difference between working on my craft and working on myself. And so that's oh, the yeah. important thing. And, and that's the thing with life coaches. It's one thing, like, if you need better junk removal, I'm your guy. I'm your consultant. I can give the answers to the test, right? That's your craft. If you need to be a better person, I tell people direct them. I, I tell people, go go to people like you or in Casey's case, where he is um, going with F3. So I, I want to talk about that. And the other thing I want to highlight real quick, again, you said something. That, that I find interesting. I read about this in my book. Uh, my book, Words Fucking Matter, Retrain Your Brain to Use Language That Serves You. I often find that there's three groups of people. The people that will always use the, 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 the empowerment language, the people that will never use empowerment language, and people that will sometimes use empowerment language. You are an example now we've had on this podcast where I'm like, oh, you don't need my book, right? It'd be a good, good refresher. Because one of the things you said, right? And this is an, uh, when, we, when we reflect back on our past, Things happen near us, right? That's it. There was near us. It, oh, that's yeah. neutral, near. It is your choice. Are you a victim? Did it happen to you, causing you grief? Or did it happen for you, causing it to be a gift? And I want to highlight what you said. You said, hey, you took right uh, physical, mental, emotional abuse from two alcoholic parents from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. and looked at what is the gift within this. So let's talk about that. How do you apply yeah. that to, to the people you coach? For sure. Great question. So I've always tapped into the alter ego. You mentioned Derek is your alias. So my alter ego. So growing up, my father's African-American. My mother's German. So growing up, I'm the mixed kid. And people are like, oh, you got to prove yourself on the basketball court. So I actually grew up in Germany until second grade. And then we moved to Pensacola, Florida. So I lived all throughout Florida. You'll hear random accents oh, every now God. and then. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah so we moved to florida and i get on the basketball court i'm in middle school i'm the german kid i'm mixing all that and i'm like oh my martial arts is kicking in and i can read the room and i'm like i gotta prove myself i'm gonna have to fight so they respect me and when i saw that i was like so this is the real american bully and all the other stuff and i'm like it's just mm -hmm. like the movies because i didn't live in the states until then i was like yep i gotta do the thing so <laughs> I had to punch the bully in the nose. I had to bust his nose. And in my head, I'm like, I don't want to do this, but I have to in front of everybody because I, I was sick and tired of getting bullied at home, getting bullied in school. So standing up for myself. So that was more so like a boundary. I said, enough is enough. I'm yep. not going to be that violent kid or the kid that just snaps one day. That's just holding in so much pain, so much emotion. But what happened was that was a defining moment because I stood up for myself, but I more so stood up for others. That's what I wanted to do it in front of people. So the older I got being able to train individuals, I felt like I could meet them at their level. As mm -hmm. in this guy, we can be in drill sergeant mode with this girl, we could speak more softer with or build them up. But I realized that that was another cheat code that came from the trauma was seeing people where they're at because being the quiet kid reading a room, 
you're always thinking something's going to get thrown at you or whatever that you you're hyper aware. So it increased my skills in sports with coaching and then also in the military, just being hyper vigilant reading. But I always talk to people to use their pain and that fire in them mm. with their passion. So mm -hmm. like with you guys starting a company, there might be a different personal reason. With me, it was more so I don't want people to feel this way for the rest of their life because I saw what it did. Alcoholism and drugs ran on both families. So I was like, I know extremism runs in my family. So I'm choosing fitness as an outlet and faith, yeah. fitness and faith. So I would go all in and some people would say, you're obsessed. And I would agree. I was like, yes, I'm obsessed with the mental high after pushing my body and mind past old thresholds. But then mm. after that, I was like, wow, I'm so open to connect with the higher source. God is guiding me. I'm here for a reason. So the defining factor was always the fire inside to help people know that they have the power within themselves. They're always searching. They always think it's elsewhere, a product, this, that, a person, an end goal, a dollar amount. I'm like, no, the, the power is already within you. We just have to peel off the layers of the limiting beliefs, trauma, whatever's on them so they can see it's in them. And when you see somebody's body language, they're like, wow, I didn't realize I was that strong mentally or physically. You guys are military. We saw it firsthand. The kid that never played sports, he got pushed past his limits. He was like, his whole body language changes. Confidence just skyrockets. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> you have some untapped potential. So I love teaching people how to use that fire to their advantage in a positive way where they don't let their past situation, their current situation or somebody else control their reaction anymore. So I always challenge people. I'm like, who is in control of your reaction and attitude? Is it you? Because if you want to be pissed off, you can be pissed off. It's fine. But did somebody else cause you to be pissed off or sad or in a low point? So I always give people a window and I ask them, I say, give yourself a 10 minute rule. If you need to yell, yell. Go in the car, go in the truck, grab that steering wheel. If you need to cry, just, just let it out. Especially as men, we're supposed to hold it up, man up, toughen up and all that. And too many of us have held stuff in for so long and that aggression pops off one night that somebody's drinking or pops off on a family member during the holidays. But always identifying where did this start? How can I use it to my advantage? And most importantly, challenging themselves to say, will I give people the reaction to expect? This family member expects you to get tired, excuse me, expects you to get sad, expects you to yell back. If you can pause for a moment and stop giving people the reaction that they expect, you can feel that power back in you and you're like, wait, this fire can be used in a powerful way because I'm wasting it being so angry or low in these different situations. I need to use this for just positive things to make a bigger impact on others. So I, I, what you said, I, I love. So I, the, my, my TEDx I did about four years ago was transform nice. your pain into passion to define your purpose. And now you've love added it. a fourth P, which is to become powerful. Right? As I'm listening to you, it's yeah. like, that's exactly it right? Use that, right? When people talk about it, it's like, that's energy. When you have this anger, this frustration, emotional response to a situation, that's energy. So oh, yes. how do you teach people to channel that energy for good? Because it sounds great, right? I'm all about it. Let's go, right? When I'm yeah. pissed off uh, at an employee or my, uh, my business partner or my girlfriend, how do I channel that for good? Great question. So the first thing that I start off with with anybody is create a list of things we can eliminate. So before we change the schedule, before we add to the schedule or the routine, we first ask, what are some things that we could eliminate that are not serving us? So for mm -hmm. somebody, it might be as simple as hitting snooze three to five times. They've done it so long, they create their own stress and anxiety within the first 30 minutes. And then everybody texts and calls them and emails and they're just like, shit, can I have some time to myself? So for mm -hmm. that person, it could be the snooze button. For somebody else, it could be mindless scrolling. Maybe they get up on the first alarm, but they're under bed, TikTok, CNN, this, this, hot woman, car. And then the next thing they know, they're like, I haven't even gotten focused. Then anxiety yeah. goes up from there. So whatever it is, it could be digital related. It could be what they consume, foods, drinks, negative thoughts, negative information. Maybe there's a negative person in their life that they just need to distance themselves from. So I always first start with a list of what can we get rid of or simply replace with something better mm -hmm. that'll give you more control? Because a lot of the times trying to add things to it, they feel overwhelmed already because they have yeah. all this stuff that they do that doesn't help them. Yeah, Derek, I, I wanted to add something to that. Yeah. I like what you said. So I actually read something um, last week 
and it was it was an excerpt that was all on consistency mm -hmm. and and how simplicity is the foundation of consistency. Oh yeah. And pretty much it's just about simplifying your life to create a routine to make things consistent, right? And it was talking about different people and, and what they've done in their life that are, you know, so like President Obama, for instance, he only wore two color suits when he was the president. That way he didn't have to worry about options of what he's gonna wear. Nick Saban only ate the same kind of sandwiches for lunch because he didn't want to worry about what he's gonna eat for lunch. These kind of things. Um, so it's funny when you said remove or replace. I'm actually going through something now this week. I put it on my goal board to simplify my process every day. So every day Love it. I want, so last night, for instance, I didn't just lay out my workout clothes. I laid out my workout clothes and then I, I laid out the clothes I was going to wear today. That way, that one extra step that I usually have, it's now one less step. So mm -hmm. for me, my goal is to, to continue to simplify uh, each day. So I like what you said about the phone. It's it's in, it's insane, right? We all know everybody's addicted to connecting, connection. Um, oh yeah. Another thing that I've, you know, having kids, what helps is, hey, when we have dinner, no electronic devices at the table. Um, Good. No, no iPad. Turn the TV off. Let's have dinner as a family, right? Yeah. At first, it's gonna suck. The kids are gonna be crazy, and you're like, oh, shut up. You just want to give them something <laughs> to shut up. But you have to remember <laughs> what's the long play here, right? Like, yeah, it, it may suck right now. But what are we trying to get to? We're trying to get to a point where we can actually have a dinner as a family, talk about each other's days, learn more about each other in a time where we're not distracted by the outside world. Oh, um, yeah. So I just wanted to, I wanted to add to that because I, I, like, I like what you said there. And what, I appreciate what you said with that, too. I try to set up my morning like that as well, where mm -hmm. every morning on Instagram or on every app, I post my story, positive quote in the morning, wake up yep. time at four. And then I take a picture. My dog's eating breakfast. I have my big water jug. I'm pouring mm -hmm. the spring water. And then I have supplements right there. So everything's laid out. Like the dog food is here. Our pre-workout is there. Or whatever I'm taking, fish oil. The dog's eating. Yeah. Not even thinking about it. And then my buddies will be like, dude, you're always like, everything's like clockwork. And I just it, love what you it, said it about It doesn't become a decision anymore. It becomes yeah. habitual. It becomes Auto a muscle pilot. memory. You're, you're not making decisions now. It, it's already just ingrained into you. So what you what so you guys are talking about two different things. I love these two concepts, and we're way not even talking about junk removal, which gets me excited because I love talking tactical junk removal. But I, this is the stuff that really gets me excited about. So the the, the first thing what you guys are talking about right here is mastering the mundane, right? You got to put mm -hmm. on clothes. Oh, yeah. You got to eat. So master the mundane. Master it so it is boom, boom, boom. All the things you're saying every morning. I post something positive to Facebook because that's my okay. Let's let's just throw something out there and see what happens. Often it's how I'm feeling that day. Someone's also has already said it better. Right? Hell, the movie um, American American History X. Like now I'm quoting a quote from a movie, right? And they said, hey, whenever you end a paper, right, end with a quote because someone's already said it better. Same thing here. It's like I'm gonna start my day with some something. It's always something unoriginal, right? It's something I've already mm -hmm. read that I uh, ascribe to, right? And that's kind of plants the seed for the day. Second thing you guys are talking about, <clears throat> which I love because I'm the operations guy in, in life, right? And I, I've taken this gray world and I've boiled it down into black and white concepts and behaviors. And what all you're talking about here is start, stop, continue methodology of change. And and when you do a start, stop, continue methodology of change, the key is you got to stop things first. I love what you said there. When you when you pile more on to someone that already feels anxious and overwhelmed and unable, you, that is a recipe for failure. And for everybody else that oh, says, yeah. oh, there's nothing I can get rid of, okay, I, I challenge everybody, do this. Do a two-week time study. Look mm -hmm. at your day, write in over a two-week period, every 15 minutes, what were you doing? You'll see how many gaps you have completely unaccounted for. And don't just write like, oh, I was at work for eight hours. No, no, no. Were you, were you emailing for two hours? Right. For me, I learned this at Waste Management. If I sat down at 9 a.m., by 9 a.m., we had our meeting. So after 9, if I went back in my office at 10 a.m., I wouldn't leave. Because from 10 a.m. until Ooh. 2 or 3 in the afternoon when I worked, I would be like, I'm emailing, I'm emailing, I'm emailing. Because it's like, yeah, there's always going to be an email. Yeah. I never got out. I knew for mm -hmm. me it was that simple. So you said, I would take my keys with me when I went to my 9 a.m. meeting. So it was done at 10 a.m., I would go in my truck. Because once I was in my truck, now I can go visit customers. I can go visit drivers in the field. I can go resolve issues. I can go to the, the, the landfill up to the hill and see if there's, you know, what, what, what opportunities there are up there. Now I'm out and about. You know what? Those four hours of emails took about an hour at the end of the day or a half hour. And I could have easily 
had had 17 cups of coffee, 900 emails, 37 conversations that were unnecessary, and I never would have got out of the office. And I made my money then in the field. I made the money spending time with the drivers. So it was all about prioritization. I love oh, yeah. that. So so when it comes to things in life, we, we talked about this on one of our previous episodes. Travis Johnson was on this uh, yeah. from Travis Johnson, right? So he talks about when we stop doing something, right? Because people are like, well, how do I stop doing it? So he has a three-step um, uh, methodology there, right? Which is delegate, automate, or eliminate. Mm -hmm. So what you've done Love now what, with your morning routine, you automated it. You're like, all the things are right there. It's, it's interesting. All three of us independently do the same thing. I always put on my clothes the night before. Um, you brought up uh, you do Saban eating the same thing or Obama mm -hmm. wearing the same suit. I learned years ago watching uh, Steve Jobs. He wore the same outfit every day. He had the same yeah, breakfast every morning. Right? Uh, Bill Gates doesn't eat breakfast because it doesn't, it doesn't interest him. And his favorite meal, Bill Gates' favorite meal, is a hamburger Americans. With, oh, sorry. With, with salt and ketchup. That's it. And because and, and, if he's going to, like, because it's just like, it so doesn't matter to him, right? Oh, yeah. what, what matters is what is he working on that day? And when you start eliminating all those things or automating it, right? Life is good. Warren Buffett has one of three things from McDonald's every morning based on how the market went. So he says, don't spend more than like $2.37 or $3.27, whatever the number is. Inflation's a bitch. Um, on <laughs> breakfast every morning, because basically, if the market did shit, he gets the like the sausage and egg or the sausage biscuit. If the market did okay, he gets like the sausage and egg. And if the market did great, he did like bacon, egg, and cheese. It's like an eighty cent greater. difference. And yeah. he has it to a point where his um his uh, uh is his assistant has the money, the cash, and change in a cup. So when he leaves in the morning, he takes his cup that is the exact change needed for whatever transaction based on the market the day before. So all he does is pull in. Hey, it's Warren. Whatever. They're like, all right, we'll see you in a minute. Pulls up, hands up, you know, dumps the cup out and goes to the next window. That's it. That's his, right? He doesn't stop to eat. He, and here's a guy that's one of the wealthiest men in the world that eats McDonald's every morning. Doesn't think twice about yeah. it. Like, that is oh, his yeah. automation. And then the third oh. thing, right? And, and or actually, the second thing we'll talk about is delegate. There are plenty of things that you think everybody, me, think I'm all important. I'm the only one that can do this. No, there are plenty of things I can delegate in life. Mm -hmm. Even, even you know, not to, you know, for the people that don't want to be bougie, think about how much time you clean or don't clean your house versus how much money it would cost to have someone come to your house every other week to clean, right? Would that free you up, right? If it's, you say, three, four hours a week or three, four hours a month, whatever, you're right. If you had that three or four hours in your business or on your life, mm -hmm. would you live a better life? Are you willing to spend that $150 to not have to clean your house once a week or once a month, whatever your cadence is? Delegate. It's got to get done. And the, oh, greatest, yeah. the greatest opportunity, what you're talking about, eliminate. There is so much crap we do that does not serve us. It doesn't need to be sped up or, or more efficient, and it doesn't need to be done by somebody else. And, and the death scrolling on, on social media is, mm -hmm. I am as guilty as everybody else. I know for me, I have a timer on my Facebook. I know if I hit my timer on my Facebook in the middle of the afternoon, I had a shit day. I had an unproductive day. I had a day oh, yeah. where I was not engaged at work. I was engaged with mm -hmm. my family. I wasn't engaged with the people that I, sh I, I need to be engaged with because I was death scrolling all day. And I love that you mentioned that because a lot of people don't even realize in every app, you can set that thing. You go to settings. Mm -hmm. I would recommend people start whatever app they love the most. I love Instagram. Some love TikTok. Some are on yeah. YouTube. But if they tap on the settings on user time, they might yep. get their freaking mind blown. We're like, how many hours oh, yeah. a day yep. if, or if hours a week? If you're, and if then you're, they can if, set the timer where they get a notification yeah. box that tells them, hey, you hit it. But that'll give people so much clarity because mm -hmm. then they're like, wait, I say I don't have time for the gym. I say I can't go see more prospects. And they're like, wait, you got proof right here. You're on Instagram four hours a day. Do you use it for business? Most people don't. They just like scroll, oh, yeah. look at stuff, get entertained. It's crazy. So like so, so, 24 hours in a day. Yeah, you're, yeah, 168 hours a week. We all get the same amount, right? So for me, I'm, I'm looking right now. So if you're an Android user, right, you go to your digital, uh, very, very tactical here, your digital uh, well-being and parental controls, right? And so mm -hmm. I'm looking right now. I've spent 11 minutes on Facebook today. It's almost 3 o'clock on a Monday. That, that's a good day. 11 minutes is like, yep, I, I checked it twice, right? I posted my thing this morning. I looked at a couple of things about the Packers. Go, Pack, go. No big deal. Right. And, and then, and, and, and that's it, 11 minutes. And I'm like, I, I can live with that. I'm good with that. I also oh, know yeah. there's times by this time, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, 
and I hit my, my timer set for one hour of Facebook. And I know I can measure my weeks, how many times I hit that one hour that week. And there's other days where it's like, I, I, I'm at 10 minutes all day, 11 minutes all day. Like That's a good ass day. And so you're right. Date, we talked about this data driven decisions. You have a smartphone in your pocket that can measure everything from your mm-hmm. steps to your minutes on Facebook. When you're consistent about checking the data and give yourself realistic goals. If you want to get to 20,000 steps a day and you're at 2000 now, what, what's right? What's that smart goal you could implement now? So maybe in six weeks, you are up to 20,000 steps. Oh, yeah. steps are, like, and, and the other thing I see is people like, well, Sally's doing 10,000 steps a day. It's like, well, Sally's got a fat ass. Like, do you need that in your life or do you need to work <laughs> on something else? Right? Because if you're at 9,500 steps a day and you're going to, oh, I'm going to get to 10,000. Like, and that's your thing. It's like, great. All right. Walk for another 20 minutes. I don't know, 10 minutes. I don't know how fast you can do fucking 500 steps. So it's like, all right, now you got your 10,000 steps. What, what are you deficient on? Because people often chase what they see other people achieving. But the thing is, that, that, that person doesn't have the difficulties or challenges or obstacles or opportunities that you have. So you oh, yeah. got to find what your deficiency is. How do you work with people to define what their greatest area of different, uh, d- uh, deficiency is so they're not just going to go with the comfortable answer, right? How do yeah, you get them to sure. do, do something uncomfortable? So af- after they create their eliminate list, then they move forward and they write out what specifically are their goals as clear as possible. So an example, challenging them to not use, say, or write vague statements. I want to become Ooh. successful. I want to become a millionaire. I want to do this. All those phrases, they just sound all vague and up in the air. They're just floating where they never feel like they grasp it. It's always like, yeah, you know, one day, yeah, you know, I'm going to get around. Yeah, you know, everything, just the way that they speak, the way that they text, the posts on Facebook, everything is like full of uncertainty. So yep. I would challenge them to get rid of that way of speaking. But yep. more importantly, on the flip side is how detailed as possible can you get about your life? How do you want to look? How do you want your relationship with your wife or with whoever you're with be? Where do you want to live? How do you want the backyard to look as specific as possible? Because a lot of things are unfinished projects in their mind, unfinished mm-hmm. projects in their yard, unfinished projects in their business, in their career, where it's all up in the air. So I challenge people to get as clear as possible. And many people, they've never really sat down to write out their goals besides 10K a month, XYZ, down 10 pounds. It's never that specific. It's just more so, hey, I got to write this list, so I'm going to rush it and go about my day. Do you have a, what do you think about multitasking? I want to know what your personal thoughts on multitasking are. Great question. So I always recommend to focus on one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. It can it can also depend on the person's career. So if they're in a career where they do have to do multiple things, understandable. But what people miss is that all of us are experts in something and we can go all out on that one thing. And it takes us like no mental bandwidth. It's like clockwork. No, no interruptions. We get three deep hours of work done. But the difference is we weren't scrolling, we weren't doing this and that while everybody else is getting distracted. So I always recommend that people get used to elevating their attention span because nowadays mm-hmm. people's attention span is lower than ever because of these things, because of the thought yep. process. But first, master that one thing. It could be their skill set or passion. See how long that they can do some deep work, like they can figure mm-hmm. out their threshold. For some people, it's 30 minutes, then they need a 10 minute break. For others, they can go three hours straight and get some deep work done. But I would recommend yeah. that person to find their skill set or passion and see where their threshold is on when they actually get effective, efficient work done and break it up from there before they try to multitask. But if they get that one skill down pat, they can slowly yeah. start to, if they need a multitask, depending on what their career is. Yeah, so so the reason I asked is because I forgot who I was talking to about this, honestly. So I, I'm not going to take credit here, but we were talking about multitasking and how it can be um, negative. It can be it can negatively impact your life um, and business because you, you, are, a lot you, of are, us, you are talked about a couple episodes ago. The ops okay. guy from Canada. Uh, well, this was very Edmonton. recent. This was yeah. This was like a few days ago, I think. Oh, okay. Any, anyways, right. maybe that's it too. But one thing I was realizing is um, multi multitasking or juggling or balancing things throughout the day um we were taught that was a good thing right um back in the day like we were taught that hey that's a that's a pro you can do all this oh yeah the bad thing that i see about it is it takes away so much 
Um, I was talking to, we have a guy, his name's a- Andrew Barton. He's been a guest yep. a couple times on the show. Yep. We were talking about an opportunity I had come up. I got offered a full-time position with a nonprofit, and it didn't really affect me too much because I was looking at what it kind of called for, and I could probably get most of that done in 50% or more or less than it takes someone else to do it. So what yeah. would take someone a full 60-hour week to do, I could probably knock it out in 20 hours, um, mainly because of my entrepreneurial background and what I've what I'm used to doing. The problem is... Um, right now, I've been multitasking a few different business op- uh, ventures, I guess you could say. And if I took this opportunity, I would have to cut at least two of those out of existence. I mean, it, in respects to the role, at least. Yeah. And it's not because of, oh, it drags too much time physically. No, it's because mentally the capacity is going to get too full. And I don't want to have to take on that burden or stress of carrying five, five things, really, when I don't really have to. Right. For sure. So I wanted to know your, that's why I asked you because, you know, we, we've been told a lot of times that if you can multitask, you're great. If you, if you do an application for a job, oh, you can multitask. That's awesome. We want you to multitask, but do you really? Or do you want them to focus on the task at hand, knock it out with undertime and move on to the next? Because now that I think about it, if I hired Andy to do a job, he's like, Hey man, I can do all this shit at the same time. I could be like, great. What's the quality going to be like, though, for all this yeah. shit, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. So to bounce off your question, I would also look at whoever the individual is, even like yourself. What am I most passionate about that I'm doing? So maybe there are three things. Is it the business? Is it this? Is is business one, feeding the mm-hmm. family the most or paying the bills? Is business two, my real passion? And what I like to think about in a competitive standpoint is the individual that's dominating all of us in whatever field we're in. They're usually just focused on one thing and one thing only, where they don't do anything else. While we do the nonprofit, while we do the other things, and this is nothing against nonprofits or anything else, but sometimes I feel like some people, they don't go all in on one thing. Mm -hmm. And right when they feel that they're getting overwhelmed with that, they'll start something new, where it's almost like a new level of endorphin hit. Mm -hmm. Where like, they're making sure that, hey, I'm doing my charity, but in the back of my head, I want to hit the next... 10k or the next six figure seven figures yeah. but i don't feel that we're going to get there so you know what i'm going to do some charity stuff and sometimes people they'll bounce to something new because they feel like they can't get that to that next level or pass that threshold but it's usually because maybe they're holding all the tasks on themselves they haven't delegated or they simply haven't been able to like teach their streamlined process or sometimes like you're doing something like clockwork and you're like wait if somebody recorded me doing this online oh, or in person, we could teach it, replicate it. Then you're like, oh shit, I'm with my wife and I'm at the nonprofit and the business is running. So I would really look at it from those different perspectives because it all depends yeah. on the person. So I'll use my own example. Like my guys I was in the army with, they'll reach out to me every couple of months and I can always tell by the message, hey bro, how you been? And I'm like, all right, <laughs> MLM, insurance, whatever the fuck. I'm like, not <laughs> interested. I'm going all out in this. And they're always like, dude, this and this. Years later, they're always like, dude, You've always done the same thing, coaching, 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 and like marketing, building the personal brand. But I always think about if somebody has a personal brand or a business, always fueling back into it, because sometimes you might just keep passing everybody, but I would just zoom out. It all depends on what the person wants. But I think if somebody chases their passion and goes all in, that can help. So like myself, um, the only charity that I will work with or help is Veterans for Child Rescue. Mm-hmm. I don't have kids, but a lot of the women in my life, they've been affected by people that have done some dark stuff. So I focus on coaching and the veterans for child rescue. Nothing else really matters. And I just made a decision to myself because sometimes it'll drift. I'll see an e-commerce thing or being in South Florida, you see the 25 year old with the Lambo and I'm like, damn, Amazon drop shipping. I'm like, all right, I'm changing lives. I'm not trying to make a quick yeah. buck to get the new car. Yeah. But I think seeing that stuff, we just get distracted where it really goes down to at your core. What fulfills Casey? What fulfills Andy? What fulfills Derek? Is it the nonprofit? Is it this or is it scaling the shit out of that one business and the family thing of like, damn, dad's a freaking badass. Like we were getting another new house, like Mm -hmm. whatever their thing is. But I feel like sometimes, especially as men, we'll go real hard and then we're like, hey, I think we're I think we need to do something over here. And we're just about to get to that next level. Or yeah. maybe we're trying to overshadow something. So I would really zoom out to be like, what is or what you think is a plateau? 
yeah. or what you think is a plateau is is not a plateau. It's just the beginning of a new level. Like you just said, like a lot of us, I, hell, I've seen Andy do it. He gets to a point where it's it's normal to see the numbers he's seeing. It's normal to to see the kind of uh, traffic that's coming in to the yeah. point it could get boring. It could get so it's like, well, are we really doing that good, or am I just getting uninterested? You know, and hell, I saw it at the same time. I mean, you see it all when things become regular, you almost naturally want to spice it up, right? Like, oh, hey, yeah. man, like I'm getting a consistently $50,000 a month. This is great. What is what's 75 look like? You know, what's a hundred grand look like? I mean, what is that going to take? Or in my case, I, I started getting into real estate. Okay. And I was like, sweet. What does a uh, multifamily look like? What does self storage look like? Um, yeah. And now, obviously, I can go after the big ones. Oh, this is a you know fourteen million dollar property, and you know if you invest now, you can get X X X. It's like holy shit, yeah. Or do I need something I can learn the nuts and bolts of it, make some cash flow, replicate it, and and have a few of them coming at the same time? I don't exactly. sacrifice price my time. I don't have to go all in on the one shot just to learn something. So I think that you're right. Like as men, especially as men, I, I can't speak as a woman. <laughs> Um, but as men, it's natural for us to always want to magnify what's in front of us. Yeah. And, you know. Exactly. And then sometimes, especially now nowadays, we'll meet somebody that's crushing it in their field and they have yeah. an opportunity, quote unquote. Yeah. But then we zoom out it. The only reason he's crushing it, he's been doing that probably 15 years, even though right now he might have an opportunity or an affiliate program. Where mm -hmm. that's what I tell my buddies sometimes. I'm like, dude, I understand that they've been killing that, but they've been doing that thing since they were 20 years old or 21. And then we yeah. have to zoom out. And I'm like, when was the last time that guy was consistent with anything, one thing for five years straight? Because mm -hmm. most dudes, they don't even last six months doing one main thing. But that's five true. years straight, that guy is going to be dominating in his skills, experiences. So I always like to zoom out on that. And like, even in my hindsight, when I think back, I'm like, Damn, my friend wanted me in Prime America. My other buddies like you should be a realtor. This, this, and this. But whenever we meet up every couple of years, they're like, dude, you're just like so excited about life. And I, I don't really think about it because I just do my every day is the same for me. But I'm like, I'm excited. I help people hang out with my dog and my girlfriend. But when I think about it, I'm like, it's because I chase the passion. Right now, if I was still army, I'd be miserable. If I was working for corporate America, I'd be fucking miserable. If I was doing anything else. So mm -hmm. really looking at that individual, what fulfills them, what drives them, and are they happy with what they do that makes them the dollars? Because that's a whole nother spectrum. Some people, they're massively successful, but they're like, shit, I fucking hate this industry. <laughs> but hey, if they figure it out, then they feel much better. Well, you see that in this men's group I'm in, this F3 group. You know, these are guys that you wouldn't know until you hear from them. These are guys that are you know, IT engineers, very wealthy, or not not just wealthy, but maybe they're just they're doing good, right? Good, good yeah. six figure salaries, but their days are the same every single day, and you can tell they're drained. The F three is actually their getaway from regular life because now they get to be around other people doing something difficult as a team, pushing through oh, that, yeah. and they get to bullshit thirty minutes before they have to go jump back in line. And uh, I think that was that was the biggest issue for me was looking taking this full-time position with the nonprofit, right? Like I'm, I took it because it's a great opportunity. I love working with vets and I'm very good at what I do, but I was like, it can't not, I have to make sure it's not a job. I can't go back in time and go, yes, I'm going to report to this. I'm going to do this. So I had to make sure I put my terms respectfully on the table. And yeah. you know, they're like, Hey, you know what? Absolutely. I don't want to keep up with you. Like this is a great, we want you because of your past. We don't want to have to keep up with what you're doing. We don't want to have to put, hey, this is what you have to do next week. This is what you have to do this week. We just want to tell you, hey, this is what we need. Get it done. Cool. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely understand that. Yeah, and, and sometimes even just zooming out, going back to what Andy mentioned earlier with like processes is if we can replicate it and streamline it, mm -hmm. it's amazing what can happen. Because sometimes we're so into that thing we're doing, we're like, wait. Have I missed years or months of being able well, to teach somebody create, else how to replicate this? Or am I just like create, scared to let it go? Yeah. And, and for all those that are listening that are employees in some way or fashion, if you're still an employee, you can create processes as an employee for you to conduct your job. And the yep. cool thing about it is when you are, if you have a goal, even if you don't have a goal, but let's just say you have a goal, that process will not just help you reach it quicker, 
but it'll help you improve that goal and your goal setting. So maybe your next step is to get promoted. Instead, it's like, you know what? I don't want to just get promoted. I actually want to start my own damn business because I've, I've seen the ins and outs. I created this process and I know I can teach this to others. Oh, yeah. Um, so it doesn't, it's not just limited to, you know, entrepreneurs or business owners. And, and whenever you, when, when you start looking at the lens of process, what we're doing, what are the opportunities? You start seeing processes everywhere. You start seeing, mm -hmm. you start personally and professionally. And then you start seeing processes. Other people are like, wait, why are they wasting time in this thing? Right. And that's that idea of wasting. Because, and you start looking for it. The challenge is, right, this old adage of that's the way we've always done it. Typically, that's the way it goes until it, until it's broken. Or even in our business, oh, yeah. right? When, when do processes get updated? Typically after employees leave. Because you're like, I don't know. Uh, Jill just takes care of it. Well, what does Jill do? I don't know. We just hand her the thing and then yeah. the thing happens, <laughs> right? You're like, cool. We talk about this show. What does she do? She does. She does the thing. I, I you know, uh, and we, we talk about this. And I and I can tell you in our business, right? Um we we constantly need to update our SOPs. That's it. We constantly need to uh, rework them because you get a new vendor, you get a, anything, anything changes or you just look at it you're like, hey, we've always done it this way and why? And if there's not yeah. a great answer, it's like, okay, well, let's come up with a good answer. And if, if we, if you scrub and you're like, yeah, this is the best way of doing it. And here we've looked at the process. You've had several people look at it, right? Um, I don't know if it was on this show or, or another thing where they said the three steps to write an SOP is one person basically gives the mission. Second person writes the SOP. Third person um, executes on the SOP. And then the third person reports back to the first person exactly what happened. And now the first person to identify this is the process that needs to be written isn't part of the process writing. So then they can say, okay, hold on. Did we make all the steps? Is there anything we missed? And so, and then, then the second person is the, the, the binder, right? That Because they're the ones that have to set up the third person for success. And when you oh, yeah. go through that, because I, I, this is what I'm guilty of when it comes to SOPs. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is the way it is. I write it down. I put it away. I have it in my head. I know it works. And then I'm just like, ah, why don't, why don't you guys do it my way, right? And it turns into Andy's <laughs> way instead of the way, right? So how do you, when you're working with your um, clients, how do you go through that SOP writing process, even on a personal level, right? Not everybody here is... Um, you know, and not everybody here is, uh, what do you call it, um, a business owner per se. However, everybody here is a person that has to wake up every day and put on pants. So exactly. what do you, how, do you, how do you do that? What does that look like? Great question. So first thing we do, we look at their schedule and what their work hours are. We'll look at their work hours, what time they're getting up, what time is non-negotiable family time. Casey mentioned earlier, he has specific times when he's with the family. You mentioned someone in the past, they leave their, they leave their work phone in the truck. So mm -hmm. whatever it is, we break down their schedule. And then from there, we look at where are the hard stop times? Where's the deep work? And then where do they do like the fluff stuff where they're like, hey, at lunch break at 11, 1130, they're eating, but they're watching ESPN on Facebook. I'm like, cool. Hey, you're able to do that. Awesome. Enjoy it. But first we look at a clear view of their schedule. Because many people, they're so in the routine that they tell themselves, I don't have time. And as you mentioned earlier, it's like they have so much time that's unaccount un unaccounted for. Like they don't know what it is. They were at the office for six hours, but did those okay, emails yeah. take them six hours? Did that yeah. call? Did they even go in the field? But we really break it down to the point where they have to be transparent with themselves in order to change. Because too many people, especially as men, our pride and ego is in the way. And once we're able to like slowly slide that out of the oh, way, man. we can say, you know what? Today's Thursday sure. and I haven't done shit. Like it's almost the end of the week, example. And then they're like, man, the first is coming around. Today's September 25th. By the end of the week, so many people are going to go hard in the paint, as you mentioned earlier, Andy, to yep. make the bills, to make the sales, to meet their quota, to level up before October 1st. Whatever they do in that time period, if they can reverse engineer that thing and do it more frequently in a more efficient way where they don't feel like they're going to get burnt out, they'll surprise themselves. Because if you think about it, all of us have went all out last minute to make something happen. We pulled 3K out of nowhere, 10K out of nowhere, two contacts. Like We figured that yeah. shit out last minute and we're like, wait a minute, this is what I'm capable of? So if we can go back to those experiences and then break down what we did then, we could almost have a new process that helps the bigger picture 
So if we can look at that and say, you know what, how did we do this in the past when we did it last minute? Can we turn this into a process and break it down where we're always making progress? Well, and that's, it's funny you say it because it goes right back into multitasking. A lot of us multitask bad things. Oh, um, yeah. I've been in the habit of that. You know, yesterday I was leaving my storage. For, so I just bought a storage facility, right? And we're getting it up and running. And actually, it just went live today. Yay to me. Awesome. Uh, and my partner. So that's pretty cool. But I was driving from it yesterday. And it, it's a good 50-minute drive. Now, normally when I have 50 minutes, I usually pick up my phone and I dial the number. I'll call Andy. I'll call someone. Hey, I got windshield time. What's up? But yesterday, instead, I just turned. I had my radio off. I didn't pick up my phone. And I drove in a silent truck for 50 minutes and I just thought and I just thought and thought and thought and I got so much thinking done that I missed my exit going home now how did that happen when I wasn't distracted well I was distracted yeah. because I was in my own my, my own head but it was all productive thinking and critical thinking because I started thinking about you know what are we going to do next and what am I going to do here and this new job offer and blah 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 if you think about it Go through your day, look at your time on, on your phone, but also look at the time you have to yourself. When do you have 50 minutes of uninterrupted time to just yourself, right? That's hard to get. And that's oh, yeah. actually what I was missing. It's like, I need more of this kind of time. I always bitch about, oh, I can't do the podcast at home sometimes because of the kids, or I can't go here and do because of whatever. I need my own office. I need a silent, a silent room. No, I don't. I just need to stop being distracted. I need to stop multitasking bad shit. Exactly. 100%. And that right there, you hit the nail on the head. You are honest with yourself, which most yeah. people can't. They always use some cop out line and they don't realize that that's their pattern is like my favorite thing about what I do is helping people identify their pattern for them. Like they pinpoint it and they're like, oh, shit. Once they have clarity, they're like, wow, I do this every Tuesday at 3 p.m. I do this thing where I start drifting. And then going back to it, the end of the month, they get into that gear where that pattern doesn't control them. So if every individual that's listening to this, whether it's business, whether it's corporate, whatever they do, if they can figure out their patterns, whatever their positive patterns are to give them results in their career, and then whatever negative patterns they have that are like holding themselves back, it could be social media time. It could be too much fluff talk with the boys. Whatever it is, if they can figure out that pattern where they're like, you know what, I need to do this at this time of the day and that at that mm -hmm. time, because it's way more efficient and effective. Yeah. And that's. I think that's important for everyone. I mean, especially for entrepreneurs, right? You have so much going on. Um, you think about the numbers, you think about business, think about marketing. Who am I going to talk to next? How am I? You, you need time to just stop and just yeah. have quiet. And just, if you want to think about things, go on a drive. If you're going somewhere, turn the radio off, turn, you know, don't turn your phone off, but I mean, don't, don't call some, don't be proactive in distracting yourself. Right. Um, proactive approach to distracting yourself is just as negative as being distracted in general, because you're, you're going out of your way to distract yourself. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, if people go back to, to the up, basics, I have to get off for three minutes. I'm sorry about that. I totally forgot. I had this freaking phone call, but all good. Yeah. All good. <laughs> but, hey, we'll keep, pleasure to meet you, Casey. No, yeah. We'll keep, we'll keep jamming here. Uh, yeah. yeah you'll keep we'll, jiving, man. Yeah. 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 No, I will. We'll, we'll round out the episode. All right. So here, crazy yeah, and de definitely in the end is if people spend more time in nature as well to get mm. more present, like literally sit down. Mm. When was the last time most people have sat down to actually like follow that bird or look at that squirrel or like watch their dog play with the bone for 10 minutes and just tap out for a moment, like be present. It's crazy. Like I do that with my dog. We have a pit bull and then we'll go on a walk and then I'll just sit and I'll just look at the water. And then I get home and I'm like, damn, where did this idea come from? And it came because I was actually just present. I wasn't scrolling. I wasn't sending my buddy random memes and laughing for 10 minutes. I was just there present in the moment. It's amazing what happens when we're just present. And we realize how much we're rarely ever present unless we're like watching a movie or something or the game. Awesome. Casey, before you hop off here, yeah. top takeaway from today's call. Yeah, my top takeaway is, is start with start mental, start mentally. Start your day with something that's productive. Um, you know, put your phone down. Or if you're going to have your phone, if you have to be on your phone, like most of us, we live and breathe on our phones. We do. I mean, you either talk on the phone, texting, or, or emailing from your phone. If you're going to do that, set boundaries on your phone, right? Um, but yeah, I would, I would say start each day mentally and physically 
before you get up and going. Um, consistency is key. Simplicity is the foundation of consistency. That's my top takeaway. Boom. I, I also wrote that one down. Appreciate you, Casey. All right, he'll hop off. Um, Love it. Derek, it's good talking good to you. Man. Pleasure to, to meet you. you. Yes, what, sir. Else have, what, what else haven't we covered, Derek? I want to take advantage of this opportunity we have with you on. Our, our audience and our, our viewership is primarily um, business owners that want to get to the next level, right? Whether they're side hustle, they want to turn to a full-time jam. Full-time, they want yeah. to get out of the truck and have multiple crews. They have multiple crews and they want to either multiple sites or increase their profitability or work less or set for retirement, right? Almost everybody that's listening to this wants to get somewhere. Hell, some people are employees. And they want to get more customers. And they want to know and think like an entrepreneur, right? So everybody that is in uh, in our ecosphere here, the Trash Talk Business Podcast, is seeking improvement. What haven't we covered that do you, that you cover that is specific, I don't want to say specific, but really around entrepreneurship and, and people that are high performing um, people that don't necessarily have a team. That's, that's what advice I'm looking for. Or, you know, what, what recommendations, what coaching do you have for that? Great question. So I would break down the gap in between when they do tasks. So let's just create a scenario, emails and going to see potential prospect. Do they send the email at the desk and then sit and chill and scroll? Do they do something else and like kill that fluff time before they get in the vehicle and drive to the prospect? close the gaps. We're mm -hmm. not trying to rush and mess up, but close the gaps by making faster decisions. And you realize how much time you get back and how many, how many less interrupting thoughts you'll have. Because I see so many business owners and entrepreneurs, they do one thing and then they kind of get excited Yep. and they ride that high, that 30 minutes turns into 45 minutes. They haven't done anything. And by the time they could do that next thing and they kind of lost that momentum and they're yep. like, ah, I got to go this, do this next critical task. But if they can get in that zone and do them back to back, we're not rushing, but close those gaps mm. and identify where is the gap? Is it early afternoon? Because the competition, he's out there driving, he's making the calls. Because oh, yeah. usually these people, they get in that rut where it's like, hey, do you need a cup of coffee? Do you need to go on a 10 minute walk? But what is the gap and how can you close it? Because there's mm. all those gaps are literally just holes in the bucket. And if they look at their week, they have all these gaps where they sent an email, made a call, Drove 20 minutes to go see the client, but what do they do in between then? They're like, hey, you know what? I'm going to drive here, stop at the store. Closing those gaps to make those decisions so they have less lag time and downtime. I love that. So uh, there's a, a woman at the local chamber, and every time I see her, she goes, let me see your calendar. And she'll look at my calendar. She goes, your calendar gives me anxiety. Right? And I'm like, <laughs> and it's because it gives her anxiety because I know for me, I got to stack things. I got to say I'm doing this. I, it's got to be on my calendar. I need oh, someone, yeah. whether it's my executive assistant or my business coach, my business partner, I need someone that's going to help hold me accountable, right? Support me on accountability because that's where I lack. I also, I like what you said there. I also allow white space time. So I give myself those times when I know I'm probably not going to be at my best. And it'll be like, like in between. From from um, experience any wine's life to this show, I had ten minutes. Ten minutes got me caught up on all the things I needed. Right, I needed. I could have easily spent an hour on emails, but I, I made my yeah. two two phone calls because every day, for example. So I run one of our divisions here still, and throughout our entire company, we have ten, twelve, and two o'clock checks. So if you're on an all day project, you got to report to your next hire at ten, twelve, and two, right? And then and then they report up. So. You know, I knew right before two o'clock here, it was, it was uh, 1351. I got off of Andy Wine's light. I had nine minutes to call my team to make sure they're good and then report to the company president, hey, this is where they're at today. So he's not all consumed with all the BS that happened today because life oh, yeah. happens, right? So in, in two or three minutes, or in, in those nine minutes, I talked to our project manager. I talked to our, one of our, our top customers and I talked to our company president in those nine minutes and I got everything off the plate. Everyone's informed. And now it's like, that bought me four or five hours now of not thinking about it. The guys are all banging out. Yep, we got over the, the challenges from this morning. Uh, something, right, because we own a business. Shit happens, right? Sometimes trucks show up late. Sometimes product shows up wrong. Oh, yeah. Right? Sometimes you show up to a customer's house when we're doing junk removal, and it's more or it's less. Right? When people are like, hey, is it better when jobs get bigger or smaller? I go, it's better when jobs are the way that we plan them to be. Right. Like I yeah. like it when I go to a job is exactly what I expect. Right. If I say, Hey, it's going to be two hours for a full trailer. I want it to be two hours for a full trailer. 
yeah, if it's more, that's great. It's more revenue, but it's also now more logistics. If it's less, it's like we got it done faster, and now it's more rev- Now it's less revenue. And that's not good. I like it when things go to plan. That's oh, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're saying reduce, right? So then this is this is this is this um, these boundaries piece, right? So it's reduce the lag time between bullshit, right? Yes, uh, and also give yourself the grace. So for example, if you're gonna piss away forty minutes. Go for a 10-minute walk. Walk five minutes, walk back five minutes. Now, you saved yourself 30 minutes. You gave yourself the mental break necessary. You got some vitamin D, right? Um, something I read recently was like, you know, take a 15-minute walk every day outside, and, and you, you know, Definitely. the next 45 minutes will be more productive than if you just sat in your office for 60. And I'm like, and I already 100%. know that about me, right? Whenever I can, I take a phone call outside. Because it's halfway, right? It's at least I'm out. I'm exercising. I'm getting, and I get all my ideas. When I sit in the four walls of my office, it's limiting. My ideas are limited. Yeah. Um, I I I haven't mastered the go walk for 10, 15 minutes without my phone piece. Uh, they also say go walk with somebody and talk about everything except for work because it lets those parts of your brain rest and digest in the middle of the day. So it yeah. is anticipate. What, whatever that is, the lull you get, and and plan for it, right? Like I talk about the hustle, the struggle, the grind. There are moments where you're gonna struggle, so plan out the struggle. And right, it's either it's better to plan it out than have anxiety. Or yeah. the other thing people have is it, right denial. Oh no, I'll just I'll just push through. When it gets tough, I'll just push through. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> they're not. You're gonna you, you're right. You're gonna go get a cup of coffee. It's gonna take you an hour. Because like you said, you're going to stop or you're going to sit in your car or you're going to sit in the park, right? If you get in the parking lot and you sit in your phone for five minutes and you drive somewhere and sit in your phone for five minutes, then you go inside and get something and sit in your home for, for your phone for five minutes. And you go back to the office, sit in your home for your phone for five minutes. That's 20 minutes. A five minute task just took 30 minutes because it took you exactly. 20 extra minutes of scrolling, right? On top of the five to 10 minute task. Yeah. And speaking of, you mentioned anxiety. A lot of business owners, they have anxiety by having too much lag time in between the communications, the texts, the emails, and the calls. If you do them yep. back to back, as you said, you have a mental four hour window where you're like, yeah, I don't have to stress about that. Nothing is up in the air. I always oh. tell people, I'm like, whatever's up in the air, get that shit done as quick as possible. So you have more peace because if that stacks and you're like, Oh, I forgot to call him. You never want them to contact you. Always no. be the faster communicator. When you communicate, give them an update, give as many updates as you can. Cause it's the most annoying thing in business. If everybody's, reaching out to you because there's an issue. Correct. Identify it, communicate first, and get that uncomfortable conversation done, and then have your mental peace. The, 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 you, you, for every one person that complains about over-communication, there's going to be 10 people that complain about under-communication. Or even, even mm-hmm. like, what, look, what we did, we, when we do the, the, this podcast, right? You got an email letting you know you're going to be on. You got an email yesterday. You got an email this morning. You got an email an hour before the show. And I know you got all those emails or some combination thereof because I get them too. Every single week, I get the emails, right? Because because it's like, oh yeah, two o'clock, got a guest, got a guest, right? Like let's let's make it happen. And even with our customers in business, we communicate, over communicate. And when you look at why we get so many reviews, it's because we communicate so much. Oh, now yeah. we get to some people they're like, hey, please stop texting me. Not a problem, right? We respect it. <laughs> I'd rather know where the line is and as than and cross it versus never knowing where the line is. I know for me, my exactly. gym. I get a text message and an email every day that I got my gym. You know what? I actually get little endorphins when I get that text message reminding me I have the gym because I'm like, oh, yeah, I prioritize my mental health. Good on me. Right? So I get the endorphins booking the appointment. I get the little endorphins with a reminder that I'm going to go do good things. And I get the endorphins when I go to the gym. So I've triple tapped it, and it took two seconds yeah. on a text message. Right? And it's like, okay, exactly. now, now, we're, now we're dialed in. Now I'm ready to take on the world. Versus the oh shit, do I have it? Do I don't have it? Um, exactly. The the other thing I do, and this has been working in my calendar. I booked out my gym and PT like six weeks now because I found the times that work best for me. I know when nice. I do my right, and so I book it out six weeks out, and now I don't think about it. I, it's on my calendar, and now again, like I talked about earlier, I typically go to the gym and my PT on Mondays and Fridays. That allows me to go hard. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I know when I go hard those three days, not soft, not like, eh, I'm kind of mailing it in. Right? I know I can put 40 hard hours in those three days. I'm going to do it. Right? I'm going to oh, yeah. put in 12 hour days minimum because that's how I operate. And so I can get 30 to 40 hours in, in those three days working in my business. And on Friday, 
not feel bad at all about working from home. And on Monday, exactly. not, not feel bad about doing the trash talk business podcast because I put the, I, I know the work is scheduled. I know it's going to get done and I've scheduled it because I can also tell you by Thursday afternoon, when I'm, when I'm going into a business after five on Thursday afternoon, four thirty five o'clock, I'm like, I'm done. Right. I have one, my last call of the week, my last standing call of the week is at seven o'clock on Thursday nights. That's a coaching call I have with this client eight o'clock on Thursdays. D U N done. I'm, I'm, I put the work in. Now I can also look oh, back yeah. and say, I didn't put the work in. I can say, yep, Tuesday afternoon, I didn't make it happen. Wednesday morning, I didn't make it happen. And now I have Friday to decide, right? I can't make up time. You can't make up shit, right? When people are like, I'm going to make up the time. Yeah. You can't make up the time. What do I need to do on Friday? So next week, I have a better week. I can't make up for Tuesday. What do I need to do on Friday so that I, I, I still make my mission this week? Exactly. And, 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 and everything that you said ties to intentionality. Yep. If people can be more intentional about every single thing they do, even their downtime, like my downtime between calls or between sessions is I'll either check my girlfriend, she's in her office, I'll pet my pit bull, go on on a walk, just stare at a bird and just like tap out. And then I'm intentional about it. I'm like, I'm not touching my phone. Yeah. I'm just going to sit here and look at the water or the bird. And then from there, go back to it. And I'll just literally get the endorphin hit, which you mentioned regarding your gym. I get the endorphin hit coming back to it where I'm like, I didn't do anything for 10 minutes. Yeah. And my mind needed it. Like just identifying, I need to be intentional about not doing anything yep. where I made a rule now to myself and it's really hard. My hardest thing is eating without having my phone there where I'm like, oh my God, I, 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 never, I'm not I'm like, close, I ain't close yeah. to that one. Man, I, got, I got my YouTube. I watch some, I watch some pizza reviews. I'm a sucker yeah. for pizza reviews, uh, Pawn Stars and any documentary about anything nice. history or war. <laughs> oh my God. And here, no, I, and I justify the shit out of it. I'll sit there for oh, yeah. a half hour. Just <laughs> now, Mike, the key is there. Actually, I talked to I talked to somebody else. This this guy I know, high strung guy, insurance guy, great guy. He is high strung. And when he goes to work, he is fucking dialed in, right? You can set your watch to his fucking haircut. <laughs> like he's he's on point. <laughs> and then I had lunch together about six months ago, eight months ago. And he goes, I just, I'm just, I'm just fucking dialed in. I sit at my desk and eat my lunch. And I go, hey man, you got to go watch some garbage TV. He's like, what do you mean? I go, I do my 20 minutes of garbage TV halfway through the day. That is my, my brain is done. Right. And I'm watching yeah. pizza reviews and pawn stars. It is pure entertainment or documentaries and shit. N not heavy shit. I'm not watching the news. I'm not watching inspirational yeah. stuff. I'm watching garbage. And so he started doing it and he still packs a lunch every day because he's cheap, right? Which is good on him, right? He's an insurance guy. Everything's about the numbers. Right, he's got yeah. a, he's got a hundred whatever, probably a hundred thousand dollar sports car, and he packs his lunch. Right, hashtag priorities. Yeah, he's got a three thousand dollar road bike, packs his lunch, whatever. So this is what he does: he gets in his car, he drives a block and a half, turns the corner and parks underneath a tree, on the street, a block and a half from his office. He puts you know like traditional TV shows right around twenty two minutes. He puts on, he watches one episode of a garbage TV show and eats his sandwich. And then drives back to the office and everyone thinks he's just going out for, you know, lunch or uh, nope, just sits there. He comes back. He goes, Andy, I'm so refreshed. I do oh, nothing. Yeah. It's amazing. Goes, I do nothing <laughs> for 30 minutes and it's garbage. And he goes, and on days when it's 10, 11 o'clock and I'm starting to feel burnt out, he goes, I look forward so much to my cold sandwich and my garbage TV. <laughs> I go, what are you even watching? He goes, I, I couldn't even tell you. He's like, like he, like he's watching whatever series he's watching. Like he yeah. <laughs> just watches it for those 20, 20, two and a half minutes. And he go, and, and I go, is it good? He goes, no, it's terrible. He goes, it's terrible. And that's what I need. <laughs> and I'm like, good. And this guy is like super intense, super analytical. Um, he, he's rolled out EOS, the entrepreneurial entre, uh, operating system through traction, which is really getting your business dialed in. Like he's got that awesome. dialed in, right? And yet for those 20 minutes a day, he eats his sandwich and he checks the fuck out. And the thing is, it's <laughs> planned. So let's think about it. Would he rather have one or two bad, unproductive hours or, and he doesn't do social media. Like he hates, he, he does, he's so dialed in. He doesn't have distractions. And now yeah. if he works 10 hours. He dedicates 30 minutes in total to nothing. And it's like, he's like, I'm so much more productive in the afternoon because before he would eat at his desk and then he's beating himself up for not taking a break or He's working yeah, through. Yeah, take a productive. fight without responding to something. Exactly. Like, that's what I had to do. I, he, I zoomed out and I'm like, can I literally not eat this plate 
is the yeah. world on fire right now? Yeah. Is, a, is a client dying? Like, let me just fucking eat for 10 and, minutes. <laughs> and, and for me, it's real simple. I know I have, I, I know I give myself the goal of 20 one on ones a month. That's my goal. Sit down and meet 20 new people every month. And I learned that, right? Because, you know, research or plagiarism is when you steal from one person, research is when you steal from everybody. And I learned that years ago, there was this um, realtor, highly successful realtor in the Chicago market. And he said he meets three new people every day. He does coffee at nine, lunch at noon, coffee at three, every day without fail. So he meets three new people a day, 15 new people a, a, a week. And then turns out that whatever, carry the one, 750 new people a, a year, right? Does that sound like yeah. good math? That sounds like good math, right? <laughs> and, and then because of that, he never has to ask for a referral. He sells houses. He There's always an introduction to be made. And all he meets everybody. And I'm like, okay, he's selling houses. Everybody has to live in a dwelling, right? Apartment house, condo, shack, something, right? Well, with me, junk yeah. removal is, isn't is that. And there's so much more to my business. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to do what he does. However, I'll take a piece of it. So a couple of years ago, 2019, I put up a, a video on LinkedIn saying how much I love lunch. So I fucking love lunch. And it's because I know I have to stop to eat every day. And I have two choices. Do I sit and watch my, my garbage pizza reviews, right? Or do I go to lunch with somebody else and meet them and introduce them? And I'm not thinking about work. I'm just, I'm socializing and I'm getting my food because I know yeah. I, I fast between 14 and 16 hours a day. Um, when I don't eat by noon, I start to get twitchy and my, my productivity starts to drop. It, it, it It's a fact, right? I need to eat. I yeah. need to give myself nutrition. And so that's the alignment I found was, okay, meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, I normally don't prioritize it. Lunch, I don't prioritize it. So take these two things that are typically not a priority, put them together, and now getting lunch is a priority. I went to my lunch uh, appointment today, and it was uh, it's a round table, so I signed up for these. It's ten people, and I, I was I was there fifteen minutes after it started. Like I said, because I was at my my counselor, and one of the guys yeah. is like, they're like, oh, I wonder if you know, because I was the new guy, because it was my first time doing this one, and uh, one of the guys there knew me. He goes, oh, Andy loves lunch. He put a video up about it, right? So he's like, Andy's not missing this. He <laughs> he might be late. He ain't missing his lunch, right? Because Andy, <laughs> I fucking love lunch. And so that's the other thing. Figure out what works for you. Like if I try to run exactly. the Derek, if I try to run the Derek play, I would fail, right? When I run your play, I fail. It's your play. Not it's not my play. Now, take parts and pieces from everybody and figure out what it exactly. is your play. Give yourself the grace and the space to be human and then get get back to it. Then get back to your priorities. Exactly. hundred percent being intentional about everything, the fun time, the downtime. And funny thing about that, he watches his shows, you watch your pizza reviews. My thing is YouTube pranks. <laughs> like at the oh, end yeah. of my day, I, cause I talk to people all day. I watch 30 minutes of pranks. And my girlfriend's <laughs> like, this shit is so corny. I'm like, this makes my so day. Dumb. I'm like, so dumb. It's that so are dumb. give backs. Like the scripted give backs. Oh, like, oh, we're going to ah, give this guy a hundred dollars. And I'm I, like, <laughs> I hate this. I, I want so bad to like those scripted give backs. <laughs> uh, I love actually the the one I will say there's on the road there's this guy up in uh, now now I'm gonna find it this is my total sappy shit I watch uh, it's uh, uh no no it's this the Seattle there's this guy in Seattle that does a on the road it, it, there's also the on the road guy the national guy that does the on the road um is it cake now I'm gonna I'm gonna I have to find this now Como 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 News hold on Como News I'm gonna have to find this what's his name he does all of the the heartfelt shows um como news heart how do you fucking put it up here anchors i i gotta give the shout out to this guy i watched so many of his and, and eric johnson there it is the news anchor eric johnson como news in seattle i know so much about random neighborhoods in seattle because of <laughs> because of the this what this guy does and yeah i need to you know i need to resubscribe to this guy when i watch his stuff i am a better person it, I watch awesome. it. It's five minutes. It's gratitude. It makes me feel good. It's sappy as shit. Um, so yeah. Ham Hawk Jones, he did this video, this, this story about this guy whose name was Ham Hawk Jones, who has a food truck uh, in the middle of the pandemic and how he survived. And he puts up these sh super shitty, so bad there are good videos of him like playing a bass guitar, like Rick James talking about Ham Hawk Jones and his barbecue. And I'm like, yeah, this is, like, <laughs> it's all the best parts of America, right? And also like, uh, it's Seattle, so it's a lot more left leaning than I am, and so you hear things like little nuanced little shit where I'm like, ah, I don't know if I agree with that, right? And yet it's yeah. like, well, but from a human standpoint, what's my argument against this thing, right? Whatever it might be, like because they yeah. Seattle took that fucking they took that pandemic shit, 
beyond serious from my perspective, right? And it's like, okay, yeah. I can appreciate this. Is what I tell expose yourself micro doses to to realities that you don't necessarily understand. It's real easy, right, and real simple to be like, oh, you're they're so far out there. We have, we have no common ground. Well, what do you have common ground on? Find something yeah. you have common ground on, and it's no different than goal setting. If you're like, I'm gonna lose fifty pounds in the next six months, it's like. Well, how about start with one pound in the next week, right? And then two pounds, right? Build some momentum first. Take on the biggest exactly. thing, lose, right? Be dedicated, super dedicated to losing the weight or whatever your number one thing is. And then give yourself the the, the, the time. Because I've seen it too where, even in business, like they set these these such big fucking lofty goals, right? Your big hair, big, your BHAG, your big, hairy, audacious goal needs to scare the shit out of you. If it doesn't scare the shit out of you, it's not big and hairy. It's it's a goal. Your BHAG should scare you. Or not even should. Needs to scare you. I'm correcting my own language here. Needs to scare you. And what do you need to achieve it? So what I liked earlier you also talked about was, I'm going to hear this all the time from somebody in my life. They'll, they'll say, oh, that person's trying to be better. And I'm like, that's fucking yeah. garbage. Trying to be better is f- like, don't, yeah, exactly. What, what is better and what is fucking I'm trying? Dibble, dibble and dabble in this. I'm gonna, right? It's like, okay, if you yell at your kid 30 times a day and you yell at them 20 times, 29 times, you better now. Like, like I get, I get so frustrated. It's like, well, just be objective about it, right? So my BHAG is to, by 2025, be a professional full-time speaker. That's it, right? That's my, my full-time jam. Share the stage with Jordan Peterson and get on the Joe Rogan Love podcast. It. Right, I love it, and, and, and there's a dollar. Uh, uh, basically, it's a. Ha- I, I'm not even saying full time means uh, I'm, I'm. I have a half a million dollar a year uh, speaking business. Right, I'm generating that type of money oh, yeah. when, it, when it comes to speaking, uh, books, workshops. Right, because it's not I'm making that. It's there's also infrastructure and cost and everything else like this. Right, so revenue exactly. there, um, because that that's a proof of concept that I have a business that's systematic, thorough, and repeatable. Versus, well, I made this much money because. I, I always talk about revenue, right? Revenue is for, for show, profits for grow. And when you understand the two numbers, then you, you can hit revenue goals because you know the profit will be there. And when you go to profit, oh, yeah. when some people only go profit only, right? It's like, well, I'm going to go make $100,000. Well, you can do that real, real easy. You can bring in $150,000 and make hundred. Can you make a hundred the next year if you cut all the corners? No, generate yeah. generate this big business, and then the profit will be there when you do things right. That's why I I focus my clients on again putting meat on the bone for sort before you start trimming the fat. I tell them go after revenue goals it. until you understand what your margins are, and and don't just say, well, I'm going to make five thousand dollars a month. Well, again, you can do ten thousand at work and make five thousand a month. If your goal is if your goal is to build a, a million dollar business, that won't work. Five thousand dollars a month in profit doesn't work if it's not associated with also revenue growth because you need overall revenue to build uh, to build the foundation of your business, right? So it's it's you need revenue and profit. Now I'm getting off on a tangent. Anyways, that that is that's my b hack, and I love sharing I love it with it. people. It scares me. I, I again, I hesitated. I didn't I didn't tell you the number at first because I hesitated. I let I let fear take over there, and then I and then I. Got the fuck yeah, over it, right? I, I saw your body language. You, you caught yourself, which is power yeah. in itself. Yeah. So that's the best thing is catching yourself. And you're like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to say this the right way. But that's that's good. And it goes back to intentional. You caught yourself being intentional. But everything that everybody heard, if they can be intentional about their micro decisions, their major decisions, but everything starts with the smallest things. They wake up. Did they hit snooze? Did they look at social media? Did they grab the glass of water opposed to the Milo sweet tea? What did they grab and why? Yep. Oh, I, I, I always, whenever I have a glass of water, I always have two or three. I told this to my girlfriend yesterday. She's like, why? I go, because if I know I'm thirsty, I know I need more than one glass. And she'll like, she'll see me. I can drink like three pints of water in 30 seconds, right? I just throw them down the gullet. Or when I'm playing yeah. volleyball, I'll drink, you know, a, a full liter of water in one. She goes, how do you do that? And like in the military, like you could train quick, fast, in a hurry, how to put yeah. down a canteen, <laughs> right? Like you had one minute to do it. And I got it down to like eight seconds, just throw it down the gullet. You know, and it's like you just you figure out, and it's all mental. Like, just literally, just just drink the water as fast as you can. Um, couple words you keep saying. So, I write about in my book and in my pet, my TEDx was transform your pain into passion to find your purpose. And and I love rhyming schemes. I I, I love when things when I can put things in put things into a way that's simple to to remember. I do like what Casey said. I wrote this down. Simplicity simplicity leads to consistency. Is absolutely true. The other thing I wrote down. 
it, it, it is it, it's a math equation. And, and I haven't figured it quite out, and I'm, I'm going to throw it by you because this is interesting. So I took the pain, passion, purpose, and I threw in four. Four. We're up to four P words that you – am I up to four? Let me double check my math. Two, four, six, and a fifth. The fifth – Six and a seven. There we go. So this is this is the, the linear thing I have in my head, and we'll see if it makes the next book. So instead of saying transform your pain into passion to find your purpose, it, this is what I've now deduced in our conversation with you. Transform your pain into positive passion to define your purpose, to establish your patterns, to be powerful in the present. I love it. Right? Because, because th- th- it's like, okay, pain, passion, purpose. Okay, good. Those, those are fluffy. But having power in the present, also positive passion, because I've talked about this in the past. Spite is a hell of a drug. Spite is a hell of a place to fart. Proving to others you can't do it is a great place to start. Proving yourself you can't do it is a hell of a place to start. Proving yourself that you can is now sustainable. Because once you prove to your haters that that, that you can, once you prove them wrong, what's next? Once you prove yourself, your 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 living self beliefs. You're right, and you do it once, and you proved it. Well, now can you prove it yeah. to yourself that you can do it again? And again, I remember when I exactly. quit smoke. I quit smoking. I said, if I can go, if I can not stop at the gas station this morning, if I can make it to work without a cigarette, I can quit. That was it, because I made it the first hour of the day, and if I can make it one hour, I can make it two hours. Two hours turns into four hours. Four hours turns into a whole shift. A whole shift turns into a whole day. One day turns into two. I haven't had a cigarette now in over fourteen years. Because I oh, didn't yeah. buy because I didn't buy cigarettes one morning. That's why. Right. And and to your point, it's a pattern. I'm powerful and I'm also, which is very important, I'm in the present. Am I am, is is what I'm doing right here and now, going back to that pain point I started, right? I am all about freedom of speech. I'm all about being good enough, right? That's my wounded inner child. And we have this podcast yeah. today. And I say to myself, yeah, let's shake the dice. Let's ran- let random people on the podcast and let's see, let me practice my craft in the real time. Have a conversation with someone I know nothing about and does it add value to others? Are we able to embrace new ideas and share them with the world? Because my why, which someone asked me recently, what is my why? My why is to be so unapologetically myself that others feel the need to express themselves in every way, shape, and form. We don't Amazing. Need any, we don't we need more Andy Wines in the world. One is plenty. We need more yeah. Derek Johnsons, right? We need more Casey Bubba Lawrences. And we need those people to be themselves. Let's get your top takeaway from today. Derek Johnson, you have the opportunity to join us here in the Trash Talk Business Podcast. I thank you. What is a top takeaway you've had that you want our listeners to leave with? Top takeaway, I challenge everybody to become the man or woman that you would be proud of Mm. and figure out how to give them to the world. Become Mm. the man or woman that you would be proud of and figure out how to give them to the world. So we talk about intentionality. Everything that we talked about all goes to the individual who's most important, which is selfless. Society would say that's selfish, but it's selfless. But if I make myself better, you make yourself better. Your family will feel it, your friends, your customers, your clients. And if they can do that as well and then give that individual to others, I feel like, honestly, that's what we're all here for. We all have our own level of trauma, pain, depression to an extent. But if we can work on ourselves and leave a positive dent on everyone that we come across. Fucking love it. My challenge to you, you use a word that I absolutely despise and you use it a whole bunch right there. And one change is more impactful. Not if, when. I love it. Appreciate that. Right? Intentionality. When, right? Um, when leaves doubt. You said it yourself, right? Or if, if leaves doubt. Yes. When is defined. So I talk about that in my it. book. Um, good catch, uh, good catch. No, no, I, I love it, right? Because it's like, this guy's fucking dialed in. I like it. And I keep hearing these ifs. It's like, well, what the fuck's the if? When? When you do it, yeah. you get the result. When, right, you give back to the world. And as you were speaking, I, I heard David, David Goggins, right, as you were speaking. David Goggins talked about, what is he afraid of? He's afraid that he gets to the pearly gates. And the pearly gates say, this is what you could have been. Here's what you, yeah. This is what you could have been. Right, he even said there was nothing wrong. He was three hundred pounds, and he was working for Eco Lab, and he had a good right. There is, there, there, there is. Right, go hard, go hard. <laughs> That's what he says, right? Because he says his fear is that he gets to the pearly gate someday, and they say, "Hey, you, you lived a good life. You were a decent person. This is what you could have been." Oh yeah, right. The biggest regret ever. 
<laughs> there you go. So I I love it. I'll, 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 I I got to get with you and send you a copy of my book. I love everything you're doing. I'm so glad. I appreciate it, Andy. You found us. And this is what's interesting, right? We're the Trash Talk Business Podcast. We normally bullshit and talk very much drunk removal this season. So episode 53 and on, it's like, no, let's have people on. Let's have conversations because we want oh, yeah. people to start to transcend this transactional relationship of junk removal. How do you be better as a purpose, as a person to be better as a business owner? I love what you said at the very end there. And I say this all the time, right? It is not selfish to work on yourself. It is selfless. The stronger, the the smarter, the more able you are to take on the world, the better you're going to be for yourself and everybody else around you. Giving, giving, oh, yeah. giving, 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 right? You, you, you're going to live on this plateau. You need to be selfless with your time and invest your time with you. It's not selfish. It's not selfish when you're being a better you. Derek, how can our listeners get a hold of you? Because I, I, I know some of them absolutely can use and need what you have to offer. What's the best way to get a hold of you? They can find me on Instagram at fit with Derek and the number two. That's D E R I C K with the number two. Fit with Derek two. My whole intention is to drop seeds, plant seeds every day. When they're about to hit snooze, they think of the video they saw. If they watch the story, they're like, damn, this motherfucker doesn't miss. He's up every day at four. So I just try to plant seeds where I'm like, I just want to see people stop wasting their potential. Stop wasting your potential. Start living the life that you always want to live. And that's what we talk about here on the Trash Talk Business Podcast. We take the time every week and you take the time every week to listen to us because it's all about getting from where you are to where you want to be. Derek, I do thank you for your time today. You gave some amazing lessons and tips. You were very intentional about the, the questions that you answered the way you answered them. Uh, I want people to follow you, hire him. When you want to get there, I can tell you, you're, you're, you right, if you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far go with other people and someone like Derek who's been there seen it has survived and thrived through the trauma can be the beacon of light that you need in your life personally and professionally to get you where you want to be this has been another episode of the trash talk business podcast I do thank our guest Derek thanks thank Casey Bubba Lawrence our producer Taylor in the other room and all of you listeners for supporting us and joining us each and every week I'm Andy Wines we'll see you next week <laughs>